Hello everyone, bringing you another in the series of videos today looking at British and Commonwealth forces during the Korean War. We've had a heavy focus on the army so far, on ground forces of other Commonwealth nations. What we're going to be looking at in this video is a recreation of a rating of the Royal Navy engaged in searching uh, vessels suspected of carrying contraband or infiltrators in Korean waters in the winter of 1950. So it gives the opportunity to look at some naval foul weather clothing and also web equipment and so forth in use at this time as well. Without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video and have a look at the recreation. So here we have the recreation wearing foul weather clothing, as you can see here, necessitated by the prevalent conditions in Korean waters during the winter months. The weapon carried is a pistol in this instance, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail as we look at the web equipment itself. In addition to this, a persuader is also carried in the form of the helve from the two-part entrenching tool, and again, we'll mention that when we get to it. Starting at the top, as is normal, we have here the Royal Armoured Corps steel helmet, this being the Mark II variety, obviously with the later green chin strap, as you can see here, in elastic. The basic uniform consists of Royal Navy Action Working Dress, or number 8 uniform. You can see the blue trousers from this uniform here, beneath the oil skin. And the oil skin is worn over the top as foul weather clothing, of course. This has a wool-lined collar, which has been turned up against the cold, and at the neck, a civilian knitted scarf is worn for warmth. Oil skin clothing is, of course, very waterproof, but it doesn't breathe at all, so if you sweat whilst wearing it, the moisture is held against your body. So from that point of view, it's not an ideal form of foul weather clothing, but it's what was available at the time. Before looking at the web equipment, we'll consider the inflatable life belt, which is worn here. You can see that at the waist, and this ties up around the neck and around the back as well, as you can see in this rear view. This is a very simple rubber tube worn around the waist in a blue jersey cover and it's manually inflated with a tube. And this has been tucked behind two conjoined pouches, which you can see at the front here, which close with brass battle dress type buttons. And these contain the ESCO life belt or life jacket light, which consists of a small battery box, a cable and a little lamp. And this is something we'll have a look at in a future video at some point. And this can be clipped up onto one of the shoulder straps of the life belt, which according to the theory means you should be easier to find if you happen to fall overboard. This life belt formed the basic life preserving equipment during the Second World War and the immediate post war period. However, in the early 1950s, it was being replaced with much more advanced designs. A set of web equipment is worn over this, and we have a mixed set here of 1937 pattern and the preceding 1919 pattern components. The braces and the brace attachments are of 1937 pattern, whilst the belt is the preceding 1919 pattern, obviously specifically produced for naval use. Around on the hip, a 1937 pattern pistol ammunition pouch has been attached to the belt. And beside this is second issue 1919 pattern holster or pistol case. This is almost indistinguishable from 1937 pattern in that it has a webbing base. Earlier examples of the 1919 pattern pistol case have been made with a wooden plug in the base in place of this webbing piece. And this contains a Mark VI Webley revolver in 455 very antiquated by this point and rapidly being replaced in service, although they do still occasionally turn up in service in the early 1950s. The lanyard used is a very simple design, as you can see here. As already mentioned in the right hand, the helve from the two-part entrenching tool is carried as a persuader or truncheon, essentially, for enforcing order where necessary, where a firearm would not be appropriate. Moving down, footwear consists of naval issue ankle boots, as you can see here, these lacquer toe cap, and these are worn with the anklets associated with the 1937 pattern web equipment. So there we are, that's a look at this recreation. As I said at the start of the video, the idea being to look at other forces, not just land forces involved in the Korean War, and I thought this was a particularly interesting example to look at. Quite interesting to look at the oilskin clothing and so forth, which was worn as protective clothing at this time, the life belt, etc. So there we are. As I say, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at some naval forces, and this obviously gave the opportunity to look at web equipment and so forth as well, as opposed to just the working uniform of the Royal Navy, which was worn at the time. So hopefully it's been interesting from that point of view. If you have found it interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, then please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. There's Patreon and PayPal linked down below. And a massive thank you as ever 
to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. Thank you very much, everybody. As I always say, it is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. There's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.